Hello, I'm the Deer Runner, and in this analysis video, I'll be analyzing the rest of Season 1, covering the USJ attack of the My Hero Academia series to study Deku's original scanning quirk, which in their world, superpowers are called quirks. This one is going to be one of the most important early points for research, as Deku is put into a true, large-scale, drawn-out battle he has no time to prep for, and has no easy win strategy his original scanning quirk can manipulate to events to get. It activates so much that even for ones who haven't seen my previous videos, should be able to easily see a scanning quirk as now. Oh, for ones who don't know, this series I'm focusing on Deku's original superpowers that he does not know about. Not the amazing powerful powers he was chosen to receive called One for All that is used by society to keep it together. This will contain spoils for the My Hero Academia series. This is a final spoiler warning. First I will show what is happening in this event. The battle takes place in the USJ, a massive facility designed to simulate rescue environments. From open water, rapids, rocky terrain, widespread fires, ruins of a city that's on fire as well, <laughs> practically everything you can think of, which a villain force secretly teleported in to ambush a training event that is going to happen, then the villains teleported the heroes to different parts of the battlefield to be attacked by villains, sent out where they'd be teleported to already so they can kill them. So a clear divide and conquer strategy over a massive battlefield. Now at the very start, clearly Deku's amazing, powerful, omnipotent, scanning quirk did not prevent them from walking deep into the trap, putting them in serious danger. So immediately there was a failure. Looking at other events, we see this happening again like in season 2, which like this one, Deku was not looking for enemies allowing a powerful villain to walk right up to him, taking him hostage. I believe it is due to a weakness that can be called standby mode. Logically, with the amount of scanning all the time 24-7s would be the most brutal, stressful thing. There was no way with that amount of data his brain would be able to constantly process it no matter how it is set up. It needs a rest. Not just a rest. It would need to be able to go into basically stand by low power mode till it is signaled to be activated, which are the desires that always precedes the quirks being active. We can see Deku when the villains revealed themselves, he was the only one who did not notice the group leaving him, heading to the exit, which Ida called out to him to get him to move, which Deku ended up in the back of the group, which one of the most common things Deku's original quirk does is to move Deku into position to win, which this time it was through mental manipulation, keeping Deku from noticing his allies are moving away from him. So we will now look for what his quirk is going for since when the teleportation move happened to spread them through the USJ, each confirmed group that was teleported were in fact close by to each other when they were teleported away, and Deku's original quirk that can scan quirks likely can determine how the teleportation attack would work. So Deku's getting distracted was his quirk placing him in this specific group with Froppy and Mineta. We can see every other group were able to hold out for a long period of time. So they didn't need Deku's help, but Froppy and Mineta were in serious danger. They were facing a large amount of water-based enemies in the middle of a lake, which despite Froppy has water abilities like a frog, those water-based enemies would made it impossible for her to evade them, even if she abandoned Mineta. So running was most likely suicidal. So to not die quickly would need to head on the boat, which a boat would be then destroyed then the water-based enemies would trap them inside the wreckage easily by surrounding them underwater. Then dig them out of the wreckage, killing them, with no chance for Froppy or Mineta to call for help, nor any way for reinforcements to arrive, as they would in the middle of a lake. 
which would prevent anyone from reaching them. So Deku to help need to be teleported with them. So why it happened? Even so Deku could have been trying to prioritize helping trying to alert Yue Hai to the attack by getting Ida out the door to use a super speed call for help like he did, or to immediately take out the communication jamming person, which would minimize time every hero would be under attack. Froppy and Mininette would have been dead long before reinforcements would arrive, or be in the sunken ship with the heroes unable to tell they are being as a large amount of water-based enemies who are either trapped in a large amount of water blocking all signs they are in trouble. They would have a hard time investigating any, any people trying to go for it and let alone rescue them, so the priority of Deku's original quirk was to keep every one of the group alive that are basically about to die before a distress signal could be sent. Which is a good strategy as his teammates are very capable to on their own realistically call for help, and the teleportation villain was extremely hard to interfere with any way in teleportation and able to... Man, his reflexes were amazing. The chances Deku's quirk could have stopped him was basically non-existent, even if he went to the front of the group, but if he went to the front of the group, he would have no time to get back to Froppy and Mineta. So why he was sent there... Now with Deku there, if Froppy or Mineta were surrounded by villains unable to escape, Deku's original quirk would have been able to calculate how firing off massive attacks with one for all moving the water around significantly would have had been easily able to move them together and instruct the villains, but would leave Deku injured with several broken fingers, so less effective to be able to handle a long battle that had just begun, which with Froppy spotting rescuing Deku with already securing Mineta, Deku's original quirk kept Deku from immediately trying to stop the villain trying to kill him, to allow Froppy to instead save Deku, defeat the villain, so Deku wouldn't defend himself from the immediate threat in front of him, to preserve his body, which so far is pretty good. Oh, he can see the bigger picture instead of striking at whatever he sees in front of him, which would have been massively risky and harmful in the long run, showing plenty of strategic restraint. Now moving on to the next part, when they were on a boat, they made no move for a while, just discussing plans. Now, Deku's original quirk doesn't usually delay, unless it's a strategy, again moving Deku into possession, by this time making him stay put. Which, if we look for what this delay caused, which was big, the villains had time to determine there were no other heroes around, then group up around the boat. Which, when the villains split the boat in two, this would send the remaining villains to get into attack possession. Which, even for the ones who stayed back in case heroes tried something, the attack the hero did was so massive and all got caught into the attack. So this was a strategy. To get them on the same page, to counter the villains when the villains make a predictable mistake. Then Deku, Froppy, and Mineta left victorious. I do expect a scanning quirk would be dominant in such a situation, where each group is trying to figure out how to defeat the other one, with both moving their forces around before they attack. A scanning quirk that can identify everything its opponents is physically doing and know everything about the environment would easily outmaneuver most opponents like what happened here. So far, this quirk is doing excellent. Next, Deku insisted they head over to Aizawa, convincing his group to head there. This again is the most common type of action by Deku's original quirk. Moving Deku into position, by this time mentally manipulating him to affect what he actually will decide to do next. Now, looking at the situation with Aizawa to see why Deku's original quirk did that, besides every other group managed to not need to help longer than Aizawa, Aizawa was attacking the main villain leader location, fighting his forces off, but the only reason Aizawa was alive was that the leader of the villains, Shigaraki, was holding back. 
for a sick level of fun seeing Aizawa beat up his small time villains Shigaraki brought with him. Now it is clear that Deku and his group just stood by watching the fight happen so it was again part of a plan or they would have moved in earlier. Looking at what that caused, since they had no chance to beat the villains, if they had just grabbed Aizawa some way and ran, then that invincible Nomu would go around the USA killing the other spread out heroes. Which if Aizawa was killed, a similar situation would happen. So clearly, Deku's quirk not making a move, allowing the fight to continue, was a strategy to contain the Nomu while at the same time giving Aizawa the maximum chance to get rescued by having allies close by ready to pull him out, if he's about to die. Which, the position would allow Deku to fire off attacks, keeping the villains at bay, with Mineta as well, who had those sticky balls he takes off his head to restrain the opponents as well. While Droppy with her powerful tongue can take Aizawa with them underwater. Now they could have tried to go for getting communications with the call for reinforcements and the whole battle, but once they do that, then after traveling that long distance to get back to Aizawa, the villains would have well in advance executed him. As they'd be pissed off and alerted that they've lost. So again, prioritizing keeping heroes alive, but it didn't go as planned as the Nomu instead pinned Aizawa on the ground, making me unable to be rescued and None of the attacks could move the Nomu off of him. At that point, they were just looking for an opening that would never come. So it was a good plan, but it failed. I'm not falling deck as a quirk on this one. It can look for potential openings and maximize chances to take advantage of each potential opening, but it doesn't mean they will appear. Sometimes you can't win. No matter how much you approach the situation, which in the future when Deku gets full control one for all, Quirk, the likelihood he can't find a way to win will be extremely low. But for now, his options are far too limited. Now without Deku's assistance, the heroes managed to send out Ida with his super speed to get reinforcements, which All Might was on his way and has super speed, so reinforcements within a short period of time would arrive as Ida runs into All Might. So now it was just keeping the heroes alive till reinforcements arrived. But like I said before, the villains immediately got alerted to this situation as teleportation villain alerted Shigaraki. Now they were looking at executions. But instead of Aizawa being executed, Shigaraki had secretly spotted Deku's group and suddenly attacked them. And for some reason, Deku did not take any action to counter Shigaraki for a long period of time. Which Aizawa managed to use his own quirk to suppress Shigaraki's quirk, preventing him from killing anyone in Deku's group. Then eventually Deku started moving before that defense failed. Since Deku's quirk always moves Deku around before extremely well, this had to have been due to a weakness that has not been identified. Since Deku's quirk can't read minds, it is realistic it got caught off guard. As Shigaraki showed no physical sign he knew, but with all the massive reprocessing of variables that would cause massive strain to readjust, likely too much for it, as it always showed delays like when it goes through a large amount of strain to start up. Which since Deku was under physical manipulation to hold Deku in place till the instant an opening appeared to send him in there, and a disruption can be expected, Physical manipulation could have been disruptive and caused this freezing by remaining on but not able to do anything. This all sounds like a computer. We all know that whatever computer you have, there is a max limit to how much it can process at once. Which we know starting the device up, activating the whole computer creates a massive strain of resources that causes a delay in the form of a startup sequence. Like Deku's quirk, when activated, has a delay. And when fully active, using high-intensity programs, a sudden massive need to alter the program also causes delays in the form of loading, which if intense enough, removes the resources from other running programs, 
off switches and inputs, leaving them frozen, just like Deku's original quirk to currently running physical manipulation of him. With how many considered brains are you like computers, except computers process much math much faster, which basically is what Deku's quirk is doing to his brain. I believe, th I believe this is what the author intended, to base this quirk off of computers. But, in a battle, deception should always be expected. Even if they don't know they're being scanned, people keep their mouth shut, and when implementing strategies, and often use deception. If this quirk is just going to have Deku freeze for several precious seconds with facing such a common problem, then it shouldn't be out there, or the villains will get several free hits against them, especially if they become aware of its weakness. The freezing weakness with no one else knowing about it is rare, with it only appearing during very long multi-step plans, which makes sense, as the simpler the event is, the more effective its analysis of the data is. For me to give another example would add far too much to this video to show enough details why a complicated event with a complicated plan has it. This critical weakness existing brings us to a major point. Once a hero's side who the observant type figures out Deku has a scanning quirk due to the coincidences, they are going to also spot these critical weaknesses. So due to the scanning quirk can't be removed from one for all and would be a death trap for one for all wielders if the villain's plan against them, using knowledge that Scanning Quirk has those weaknesses that allow them to get free hits on Deku, so can realistically kill him. Even if Deku gets full control over one for all power, this needs to be one of the most closely guarded secrets. Also keeping Deku in the dark about his Quirk has a lot of advantages. Due to how this Quirk that is a living Quirk that exists by being in an isolated separate section of his brain, so they are opposites personality wise, which created the social phobia problem of Deku's original Quirk. That in this case is an advantage, as his Quirk devotes its powerful abilities to keeping itself hidden and will literally abandon any plan to avoid suspicion allowing pretty much any consequences. So it was very hard to detect as long as they maintain the fact Deku does not know of his original quirk. To maintain the most excuses to not make it itself obvious. To Deku, which would also translate to anyone else. Which since being opposites also made his quirk prone to going way too far and not caring about consequences to a high extent, we can expect once Deku knows it is there, it's going to be really hard to hide. So we actually can expect they won't tell Deku anything since they need him now and not later due to this incident will make them strongly suspect All For One is alive. They confirm it is in the near future, which All For One is basically a godlike villain and only the power of One For All can defeat. So they need it now, not later. So it won't delay Deku using one for all to correct his original quirk issues. No matter how bad things can get with this conflicting quirk that is also very dangerous, it'd be better than risking full annihilation. So they took, chose a lesser of two evils. Now moving on to the next part of that battle. As I said before, with the super speed hero eater running into the heading over there, All Might, who also has super speed. Then a bunch of delays happened before the villains attacked Deku's group. So All Might easily came in, stopping the villains that were attacking Deku's group. Next part, for a while All Might just took control of the situation, sent Deku away with Aizawa to rescue him, but then got stuck in a trap. Now he could have killed him, but Deku ran back after a lot of delays, which of course again, that is what his quirk does. It times Deku's movements a lot. So we see what it causes, which probably is going to be something big. The villains fired a teleportation attack at him, but a split second before he get teleported, it was stopped by other in-training heroes who were able to avoid detection due to the villains only focus on Deku, as they were an instant away from teleporting him away, beating him so it would be focused on him, allowing the in-training heroes to counterattack, which they beat the main villains up, restraining the Nomu and teleportation guy. 
Doo Doo Deku Distracting the Villains, a wonderful plan by Deku's original Quok. Next part, Deku's original Quok could see that Nomu was not properly restrained, and it's about to be a serious threat, which if they focus their attacks now, they can kill it. Then the villains would be beaten. They could have won. But due to the social phobia weakness, which is Quok will do pretty much anything just to hide itself, including abandoning plans, Deku was not told this information, allowing the Nomu to go back on the offense, which was devastating, which All Might could have admitted he knew what a Nomu was, and there was nothing they could do for that creature anymore, just kill it, which would have allowed a quick end to the situation by Deku's original Quok, taking advantage of Deku consciously knowing about it. But All Might didn't do it. They could have won, but the social phobia stopped it. Being limited to what Deku can perceive by himself is very restricting. While of course an opponent would hide her to a strategy, but with how much this quirk can know and manipulate it like he can at most times not need to tell Deku anything and find ways to alert him, next All Might defeated the Nomu, but was unable to move due to he used too much of one for all. He tried to intimidate Shigaraki, which clearly, obviously should have worked for any normal person with the p amount of power he just displayed. Then saying, do you want to be next? Basically, or do you want to surrender? Shigaraki is an idiot, so attacked anyway instead of attempting to teleport away. Deku's original quirk could see the reinforcements from the now alerted UA high school was about to Ride, which we predictably see again, Deku's original quirk made Deku charge at the enemies, making them focus on Deku, which delayed the villains as they adjust to strike at Deku. The window of opportunity was extremely razor thin on this one with how close to death Deku was, but it's clear how good his quirk is at that. But we can see this time Deku's original quirk had used one for all breaking Deku's legs. Since the battle would be over right after this, maintaining Deku's body was not necessary anymore for Deku's original quirk plans, which with how they are opposite so his quirk is ruthless and immoral, it is not a surprise it threw resources away. Though this time damages were not severe with Deku having access to supernatural medical treatment that can heal him quickly right after the battle. Then the reinforcement rise, defeat the villains, and Shigaraki and a warp villain managing to retreat. That seems to be all the information stored here, so I'll end my video here. Clearly, Deku's original quirk did a lot of good things and had advantages, but its weaknesses that can be exploited and randomly appeared while anyone trying to exploit them were severe. Freezing when variables calculated are shown to be wrong, which can be caused by simple acting. Delays for the quirk to activate allowing enemies to ambush them, literally accepting losses just to hide itself, and when resources is not needed anymore, doesn't care what harm it does to it. Clearly, Deku would be at times far more effective than most heroes due to when his quirk works correctly, it's devastating to the enemies, and the growing resources from the godlike power one for all would make it do amazing things. But it will also be expected to randomly fail a lot, allowing massive mistakes to happen, which doesn't even consider the moral questions as quick as unable to consider while beating down all its enemies, which can be by itself not allow a good ending no matter how much he fights. This has been Deer Runner, the runner of Deer. Thanks for watching.